Welcome back to Chemistry with Gaffney. Last week I asked you to take a look at the electronic configurations and we went through some notes and talked about that and feeling of electrons in the shells and the orbitals. What I would like us to do today is go over that homework. So here, I'm going to focus it just to make sure I have it. I'm sorry, i got to move stuff to do, to do. There we go, focus. This is a, and my answer key for your homework. So I ask you to write the electron configuration. You could have written in one of two different ways for each atom. You could have written it as the full electron, the full notation. Or the abbreviated form, which is known as the core notation. Both are acceptable. If I specify a specific type, I hope that you are able to reproduce that. Filling this is just tracking yourself through the periodic table, going through and counting. The first row is the n equals 1. The second row is the n equals 2, and so on. So when I ask level 1, do to do, the n equals 1 shell has an s orbital. n equals 2 has an s and a p. n equals 3 has s, p, d, f, s, p, d. 4 has... Daddy. Yes, sweetie. I'm sorry. Oh, Why'd you bleep? That's okay. Don't worry. I was bending it. And it bent too much? Yeah. That's okay, sweetie. Thanks for telling me. Can you fix it? Well, I don't know if I can really fix it. I can try to glue it back together, but it's not something that, it's not a big deal. You have to flip one piece over, not the other. Okay. If you leave it, I can try to tape it back together or glue it back together, okay? Just leave it there. I don't know if you can help me. I'm just doing some chemistry. And do you like the picture I draw? I love the picture you drew for me. Right, can I go back to my teaching? And I borrowed it. The red one, yes. So as you go through, you're just counting and adding and get in the habit. I'm going to continue to ask some of these and hope you remember them. So, I might even give you a little Google quiz. So, fluorine, 1s2, it's in the second row. It's near the end. It's actually in the halogen section. We'll talk about halogens, alkali, alkaline earth metals, transition metals, lanthanides, actinides, those types of things. I'll mention them today briefly. Page 292 in Chapter 6. 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Or you could write it in the core notation helium, 2s2, 2p5. Neon. Neon is a noble gas. Noble gases are what every element wants to wants to essentially be, what it wants to act like. So think about your role models. Think about how they act and how they dress and how they behave, and that's what you kind of want to shoot for. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, or helium, 2s2, 2p6. Sodium. First column. Very reactive elements here. It is an alkali metal. They have this one electron in their, what's called a valent shell, and I'll define that later, that is highly reactive. It doesn't want to hold on to it. It's like having, like, something loose hanging out of your book bag that, like, you don't really, it's important to you, but you don't really care, and if you lose it, it's not a big deal. That's how sodium feels. That's why they're so reactive. They're like, they just want to blow up and get rid of this, essentially. So, sodium, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s1. It's now in the n equals 3 shell, and it has an s orbital available to it, or the core notation neon, the nearest noble gas. You use noble gases according to the core notation. Core notation, you use the noble gases that are the row before. So neon, 3s1. Silicon over in 3p, and going through, you get 3p2. 3s2, 3p2, neon. 
argon is going to be similar. It's going to be neon in the core notation, 3s2, 3p6. It's another noble gas. It's going to have 6p electrons in the subshell. Sulfur, we're in row, row 4. Sorry, this I got these confused. This is row 5 still, row 3, question 5. Sulfur, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. Number seven, titanium. Titanium, it is one of the transition metals. It's the second one in that row. It's in the fourth row. So we're going to be working with 4S. And if you remember your electron configuration table, I can't remember what page that's on right now. That is going to be a 4S then a 3D orbital. So let's take a look at it. Titanium, We all have, it has the 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6. They're all in there. They're all contracted in the middle. The ones that are outside are the 4S2 and the 3D2. These are the outer ones that more reactive ones, but we'll talk about exact reactivity and how these play a role. There's my neighborhood raven nesting somewhere around me. And that would be argon, 4S2, 3D2. Zn. All the way at the end of the 3D. So if you count that transition metal section, it's going to show you that it has 10 spaces for electrons. So you're going to have a 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2, and 3D10. Between the, the titanium and the zinc, there are a few exceptions to how they're filled, and I will mention them in the notes later. And that would be argon, 4S2, 3D10. Bromine, halogen, highly reactive. It wants an electron. It has... If let's go through 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p5. It's very close to getting a noble gas type configuration. And if it adds one electron, if it adds one electron, it'll have 4p6, and it would be seeming like to itself it's a noble gas. It's highly reactive as well. Alkali and halogens are highly reactive. KR, Krypton, halogen. So that means you're going to fill every shell that it has available with an electron. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 4, 3d10, 4p6. And its core notation would be argon, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6. So that's reviewing the homework. Take a minute to look at it. I will scan this in. I will post it. I'm going to stop this video, and I'm going to continue with the notes.